Hello, for our ITB project we have prepared 16 exercises. Here are the two uh, exercises for Shan. The first one asks, a computer is continuously sending numbers in octal. An analyst observes that the probability of receiving a package such as 000 is four times bigger than any other combination. What value would the entropy have at reception? For this, um, there are eight possible combinations for the package since the numbers are in octal. So we have x1, x2, all the way to x8. Uh, each of them has a certain probability of being transmitted. Uh, let's say P. Except from the package 000, for which the probability is 4 times higher. So we will say 4P for that one. Now, uh, summed up, all the probabilities equal 1. So 4P for the first one, plus for the seven other combinations, 7P equal 1, which means that uh, P is 1 over 11. As for calculating the entropy, it is done like this. The entropy equals minus the probability of uh, each combination. Uh, for the first one, it's 4 over 11 multiplied by logarithm in base 2 of uh, the same probability. Since the next seven cases are the same, we are just going to write plus seven multiplied by uh, the probability multiplied by logarithm. And uh, these calculations roughly equal zero point fifty three plus two point two, which equal two point. 73. Even uh, if we don't have time, the three minutes uh, uh, allocated to finishing the exercise, if we don't have time to finish the calculations, the other results are uh, different enough to be able to approximate the correct answer, and that is 2.73. As for the second exercise, a die with six sides, one with 24 sides, and one with 28 sides are thrown. What is the mean amount of information given by the result? Um, for this, we need to figure out how many um, combinations there are. For this, we multiply the number of sides of possible results on each die. The result is 4032. And hence, we have uh, 4032 combinations.
each with, a, with an equal likelihood of 1 over 4032. Now, we have to calculate the entropy. Um, sorry, the amount of information, not the entropy. For that, we have minus logarithm two uh, in base two of uh, one over uh, four thousand thirty two. We can erase this, which equals twelve. So the amount of information is twelve bits. Here are the exercises for fixed point. The first one asks, which of the following is a representation of the not yet normalized two's complement result of the decimal operation 25 minus 378? If we look at the results, we see that uh, here uh, we are supposed to use three nibbles as opposed to bytes. So let's write the number, the numbers as uh, three nibbles for 25. Is in binary uh, zero. Okay, as for three hundred and seventy eight, we have zero, 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 one, zero, one, 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 zero, one, zero. Since we are subtracting. 378 from 25, we will uh, use 2's complement uh, on 378 and uh, then add them up. So for the addition, we'll write first 25, 0, 0, 0. And now for two's complement, we keep uh, we start from the right and keep each digit the same until the first one, uh, including the first one. So zero, one, and then we invert each other digit. So one zero. Zero, 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 one, zero, one, 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 and we add them up. One, 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 zero, zero, one, zero, one, one, one. The exercise asks for the unnormalized result and uh, this is it. Now let's see. This one is the result. For the second exercise, which of the following represents the one's complement uh, of the signed byte representation of minus seven? The keyword here is byte. 
uh, we can represent minus 7 as uh, a nibble, but uh, it, we should use a byte. So, minus 7 normally is uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. 1's complement is just the inverse, so we will have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1. And this is the correct answer. The following two exercises are for floating point. The first one asks, which of the following is the decimal number that has the floating point representation C2510000? So first off, we need to write that in binary. Uh, so, C2, 5, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, is uh, one, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. And, uh, it keeps going with zeros until we have uh, 32 bits. Uh, okay, so looking at this, uh, the first bit represents the sign, so we have a minus. It's a negative number. The following eight bits represent the characteristic. So, the characteristic is 132. Uh, we get the an exponent uh, since this is short per uh, simple precision we only have 8 bits for uh, other types of precision uh, we can have more to calculate the exponent for simple precision we subtract 127 from the characteristic so we get uh, the exponent 5 now uh, the we take the following number uh, and put it after a 1 so 1.101 1. 1. 0, 0, 0, 1. And we multiply it uh, with, the, with the with a 2 at the exponent 5 to get the actual number. Um, one one zero one zero zero point zero one which is uh fifty fifty two point twenty five of course we will minus actually so let's see uh, Point twenty five, yes. Uh, minus fifty two point twenty five. Now for the second exercise, 
Which of the following is the floating point representation of the number 17.75? Uh, we get a hint that we should be careful about the sign. For this, uh, we should first write the number in binary. 17.75 uh, is 0, 1, uh, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, point one, 1. Um, we want to only have one digit before um, the point. So, 1.0001111 multiplied by 2 at the exponent 4. Since the exponent is 4, we are using two nables, so simple precision. Uh, the characteristic will be 127 plus 4, which is 142. So uh, now we have to write it in the floating point, the number. First of the sign, uh, the number is positive, so uh, 0. Now, for the characteristic, the next 8 bits, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. This represents 132, uh, the characteristic. Now we have to just uh, fill with this. Zero, 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 one, 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 zero, and uh, we keep having zeros until we have uh, 32 digits. So, in uh, hexadecimal, uh, this would be four. One, eight, uh, and E. It keeps going with four zeros. And this is the answer. We have uh, reached the part about binary coded decimal and other codes. For the first exercise, what is the gray code representation of the decimal number 22? We also get a, a hint, convert first to binary code decimal. Uh, this is because uh, if, uh, if we haven't uh, memorized gray, uh, we can still use binary code decimal uh, to find the, the numbers in gray code. Um, so, we have 22 in decimal. We first have to convert it to uh, BCD. Uh, that would be uh, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0. To convert a number in a gray code from BCD, we have to uh, sum up uh, every digit with the one before it to get the corresponding the corresponding digit in gray code. For uh, the first digit, we imagine that there is another zero in front of it. So zero plus zero, zero. 0 with 0, 0, 1 with 0, 1, 
now uh, we add the previous one with this one one and then we start over uh, we add the previous digit to the current one 0 0 plus 0 0 0 plus 1 1 1 plus 0 1 Uh, so this is the gray code for 22. 0011 is to gray code. Uh, the result is here. It is correct. Uh, the second exercise asks about the icon representation of the access free code 1011 for this, we should also convert to BCD at first. So, uh, to convert to BCD fr from access free, we just subtract free, as in one one, from uh, each nibble. So, one zero zero zero, and here. Uh, one zero zero one is left. Uh, the number in decimal is actually eighty nine, uh, but that doesn't matter for us. Uh, for icon, icon is a weighted code, so each bit uh, represents a different weight and uh, they are like this when uh, instead bcd is weighted as the first bit is 8 the second is 4 the third it is 2 and the last one is 1 from most important to least important bit now we have to see how much each different neighbor nibble represents. So the first one, as I said earlier, is eight. Uh, in icon, that would be one, 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 zero. Two plus four plus two is eight. Uh, the second one is nine. To represent that in an uh, icon, we write one, 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 one. Two plus four plus two plus one. And this is the result. These are the exercises for CRC uh, for the first one. Let a message be uh, seven ones knowing that uh, g equals one one zero zero what will the crc code word be to find the crc code word we merely have to treat uh, both the message and the generator as polynomials and uh, divide them so um, Let's write the message as a polynomial.
and now we divide by the generator and uh, the generator was one one zero zero so for each one we have a uh, So x to the third plus x to the second. Uh, since we don't write x to the first or uh, one, since uh, the last two digit digits are zero. Um, okay, so uh, x three. So you sub subtract. So x to the sixth plus x to the fifth, and uh, we remain with uh, x to the fourth plus x to the third plus x. The second plus x to the first plus one. Now we can uh, do this once again. Plus x, we multiply this by x and we have x four plus x three. And this is the final result uh, of the division. We can't uh, divide further since here we have to do the third power and here the highest one is to the second. So to get the CRC code, first of all, we multiply the original message by the degree of the generator. The degree is free. Uh, by 2 to the degree of the generator. So, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, um, yes, 7 once, 0, 0, 0. Okay, and we add the result. 1, 1, one. So we get one, 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 one. And the result is also here. We could have figured out uh, more easily, looking at the answers, that uh, the first part of the CRC code is uh, should be the same. Uh, but we have calculated it nonetheless. Same for the second problem. We could look at uh, the beginning of the code word and uh, see which one uh, is equal to AA. Nonetheless, we will uh, solve the problem completely. So let the initial message M equals AA and the generator one one zero zero one which one is the correct received code so we will divide the polynomials once again but first we need to write uh, the message in binary uh, a is one zero one zero and uh, This is the message. Out of this, we get x to the seventh plus x to the fifth plus x to the third plus x. And we divide by the generator, which is one one zero zero one so x to the fourth 
plus x to the third plus 1. We can uh, do by x3, so we get x to the 7th plus x to the 6th plus x to the 3rd. After the subtraction, it is uh, x to the 6th plus x to the 5th plus x. We can divide further. Uh, plus x to the fifth, plus x to the second. And uh, we get x to the second plus x, and we cannot divide further. Uh, that being said, the degree of the generator is 4, so we take the message, the original message, uh, and uh, We add another nibble to which uh, we add the result zero one one zero. We get one zero one zero one one zero zero one one zero. Uh, which is here. We have reached the Hamming problems. Which bit is transmitted incorrectly in the Hamming code word? 1001000001110 Let's write it over here. 1 0 0 one zero 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 um, one 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 zero one zero one zero uh, first of all the hemming bits take the places uh, uh, corresponding to powers of 2. So the first one is on position 0, 2 to the 0 power, which is this one. Uh, on position 1, 2 to the 0 power. Okay, so uh, the second one is uh, on position 2, 2 to the first power, then 4, then 8 then for 16 these bits track parity so uh, for the first one we make a sum for each one we make a sum of bits and see if uh, the result is even or odd if it is odd then there must be an error within that, that set of bits for the first one, we add one, we do not add one, we add one, we do not add one, and we keep going like this. For the second, we add two digits to the sum, then skip two, then add two, and skip two, and so on. For the fourth, we add four, skip four, and this is the same for each one. So let's see. For the first one, one, one. One zero one zero 
1. So the result is 1, which means there is a problem, an error, within that sum for the second bit. 0, 0, 0, 1. Again, a problem. Let's check the fourth bit, the third hemming bit. Uh, so, 1, and we skip 4 and add again, uh, and uh, the result is still 1. Each of them has uh, detected an error so far. Uh, let's shake, check the eighth one. So, uh, this one actually includes all the bits until here. The result is also 1, it means it's wrong. The last one, uh, the result is 0, so the error is not on this one. Uh, okay, to easily see where the error is, we can uh, add the positions of the different bits. So, 1 plus 2 plus 4 plus 8. And we get the position 15. Um, okay. And the result is here, the 15th digit. How many Hemming bits are in a 220 bit code word? Uh, since uh, Hemming bits uh, are situated on positions that are powers of 2, we can compare 220 to powers of 2. So, 2 to the power of 7 is smaller than 220, which is itself smaller than 2 to the 8th. So, uh, together with the Hemming bit that is on the position 2 to the 0 of power, there are 8 bits in the code word. And the result is here. These are the exercises about Boolean algebra. So, being the function f of uh, x, y, and z equals to x or y and x or z or uh, y and x or z or uh, z and x or y, which of the following is the ultimate simplification of the complement of f. Uh, it uh, also, uh, the hint also says that we should use common terms, uh, common factors. So let's write it over here. x y x z x y x plus z plus z x plus y. Okay, so we notice that uh, uh, there was a plus here and a plus here. Okay, so we notice that x plus z is one of the common factors. So 
rx plus z multiplied with um, x plus y plus y and uh, then multiply it with x plus y is left outside the parentheses. So y plus y is just y. So you can uh, write x plus z, x plus y um, plus z x plus y. We notice that uh, the next common factor is x plus y. So x plus y multiplied with x plus z plus z which is just equal with x plus y multiplied with x plus z. We can also simplify this even further uh, by getting the x out of the parentheses and uh, we will have x plus y z if x is true then the function is true if both y and z are true then the function is also true uh, so this is the answer for the second for the second problem which of the following is the ultimate simplification for the function f of x, y, z, and t equals with x negated y plus x y plus x y negated z plus x y t okay so um, we notice that we have x as a common factor so x y plus y negated z plus y t plus x negated y okay now we have both y and uh, y or t so um, we can have x uh, this expression is equivalent with this one. This is uh, because uh, between uh, y or yt, uh, if y isn't true, then uh, yt wouldn't either so we can just write y if it is true then uh, both of them are true if it isn't both of them are false uh, okay uh, if it is true then y or yt is true okay so next up we See that uh, 
x is actually um, the parentheses can actually be written like this Uh, they are also equivalent. Now we have plus x. And we see that y is also a common factor. Plus x negated. And this expression is equivalent to just y since x or not x will always be true. So y plus x z. And uh, this should be the answer. Yes, it is here. We have arrived at the final part of the project, that is circuits. So uh, this problem asks us what is x. Um, so, we have a circuit drawn here. Uh, we can notice an AND here, an OR and a NOT. So, this here is an A and B. And it is, uh, and here there is an OR. Now let's see what uh, we add. Uh, it's a negated B here. So X is AB plus not B. Okay, that was simple. And uh, now the second problem, what is equivalent to X? Here we have uh, three uh, variables, so uh, not variables, anyway, uh, A, B, and C. So here we have an OR, we have A, OR, uh, this comes from B, OR, here is an OR between A and C, so A, plus C and uh, we also have OR here is an OR between C and B so B plus C we can just open up the parentheses so A plus B plus A plus C plus B plus C. And uh, since it's uh, just OR, all that will remain will be A plus B plus C. Okay. So, uh, this was the end of our presentation. Uh, thank you for listening.